when we talk about how targets are seen from work, it is better to realize first how they would be seen by somebody who is hovering above the surface. So, what they are going to start with this is the, the diagram of our solar system. At the center is the sun. We are showing our orbit to the center. Earth is drawn here. As a representative orbit, we have drawn one orbit of the inner planet and we have drawn one orbit of the outer planet. Now, let's look at what are the possible places this inner planet and outer planet can be. First, we, uh, look at this position where our inner planet is in the same vertical plane of sun and earth. Why I am saying plane? Because here we are seeing a 2D uh, image of the solar system. In principle, the planet's orbits can be tilted. So, a planet can be slightly below the sun earth line or slightly above sun earth line. So, instead of saying sun earth line, I am saying this vertical plane, that is a plane coming out of the screen, passing through sun and earth. So, this vertical plane, if the inner planet is at this point, which is the same vertical plane as sun and earth, then we call that inferior conjunction. Conjunction is coming together. Why coming together? As seen from earth, we will see the planet and the sun in the same direction. So, they are seen as they have come together. Inferior because their planet is in between. Next, we can have this same inner planet on the other side, same vertical plane on the other side. We call that superior conjunction. Here, again, conjunction, they are seen together, but superior because in the inner planet on the other side. Next, for the outer planets, outer planet, again, same vertical plane, the planet is seen together with the sun, but now there is no Second option, there is only one conjunction, so we simply call it conjunction. So, inferior superior is for the inner planets, conjunction is only one for the outer planets. Next, the opposite position of that is this same vertical plane, sun earth plane, but the outer planet is on the opposite side of sun. This we will call opposition. How we see observationally, conjunctions we see. As if you are standing on earth, I see, okay, there is sun, just right next to it, I see the planet, that is conjunction. Opposition, what I see is sun is on this side and the planet is on the opposite side, that is opposition. Next, if we go, now, practical problem is, is if we, if sun and the planet are exactly in the same vertical plane, then sun is so bright that we can't actually see the planet. So, exact moment of conjunction, the planet is not visible. Typically what we see is when we call planet alignment, that means that the stream in the evening sky or in the morning sky, is when the planets are reasonably close to sun as we see from earth. So, when we say in the evening sky, there are just after sunset, there are so many planets and all, practically what is happening is all these planets are very close to the conjunction position. It can be here, in a net, or it can be also here, or this side, or outer in this side. They are very close to the sun, but they did not exact addition position yet. Like, as an example, in May 2000, uh, we saw that uh, this position, this is, I have taken a screenshot from Stellarium. Uh, so, these are the examples of planetary alignment. Now, going beyond that, we come back to the, our original picture. We saw what happens when Everything is on one line. But planets I mean, will not be exactly in this one. They, they can be even in the earth. So typically, what we see from Earth, okay, Sun is somewhere here, the planet is somewhere there, and as seen from Earth, we can measure the angle between them. If the Sun is here, planet is here, what is the angle subtended at Earth? So that angle, angle at Earth between planet and Sun. Is what we call as elongation of the planet. We can define it for the outer planets, we can also define it for the inner planet. Elongation is general term. Now, as you can imagine, if you take this position, elongation of this outer planet is zero. 
if you take this position elongation of outer planet is 180 and you can take all values in between that special case would be when elongation is 90 so angle at curve is exactly 90 it can be at this side or can be at this side we call that quadrature now quadrature there will be uh, two types we say eastern quadrature or western quadrature similarly elongations can also it can be by eastern elongation or western elongation now these words are very tricky why are tricky because when we say eastern elongation that means the planet is seen on the east side of sun that means if it is seen and in the east side of sun that is it will rise after the sun and this day after the sun which means it will be seen in the evening but not be seen in the morning and evening it will be seen just after sunset very close to sun that means it will be seen in the western side western elongation planet is to the west of the sun say it will rise before sun just before sunrise if the elongation is small and that means we see early morning in the eastern side so eastern elongation planet is seen in the evening but typically in the western side western elongation planet is seen in the morning but typically in the uh, eastern side now we have seen this conjunction opposition quadrature we can define the period of the planet as seen from earth see earlier people did not know that all planets are going around sun all they could measure that we can see planets moving in the sky and we have to measure how long for it takes planet to come back to similar position for a similar position say inferior conjunction to next inferior conjunction or superior conjunction to next superior conjunction now are uh, here or uh, for outer to the latent conjunction or opposition to next period this is called as synodic period synodic period is time between two successive conjunctions of same time how we can, can calculate synodic period uh, you have seen in your uh, school physics uh, the examples about relative velocity the two cars traveling and if you sitting in one of the cars what is the velocity of the other car Like those kind of models are done. There we use linear velocity. We say that if one car is going to 40 kilometers per hour, second car is going to 60 kilometers per hour. Then for the slower car, the 40 kilometers per hour car, the velocity of faster car will appear to be 20 kilometers per hour. Here we are going to do same thing with angular velocity. We are sitting on Earth, so Earth has angular velocity around Sun, and the planet has angular velocity around Sun. So what is the relative angular velocity? The planet with respect to Earth will be just different than the angular velocity. So if you, so omega relative, that is angular velocity, is difference between omega of Earth and omega of planet. Now, for the inner planet, omega of planet and uh, will be will be faster, and for outer planet, omega of planet will be uh, smaller. So now, here for the inner planet will be Omega planet minus omega earth, or our other planet will be omega earth minus omega planet. Thus, I have put the absolute uh, value sign. We take the absolute value of difference between the two. We can substitute omega as two pi by t in all three cases. Two pi will get cancelled, and you solve this. You get the expression of the sine wave. You don't have to remember this expression. If you just know this, you can work out. Now coming to next part, we saw this for the outer planets. How we define elongation and quadrature? For, because quadrate for outer planets, the elongation is possible from zero to one eighty. For inner planets, zero to one eighty elongations are not possible. Zero is possible. This is zero. This is zero. But you can't even get quadrature. You can't even get elongation ninety. There will be some maximum elongation which will be between zero and ninety. How do we know? Where it will be maximum? Will it be here or here or will it be some other place? If you think logically, like if if the planet is here, 
I draw line, then this angle becomes zero meter. If the current is here, I draw line, then this angle becomes zero meter. Now, if you keep doing that, you can find a position of the planet somewhere here where a line drawn from Earth will be perpendicular, or uh, it will be tangential, right? It will be tangential to the orbit of the inner planet. When this is tangential, how do we define, uh, how to calculate maximum elongation? Once we see that this is a right angle triangle and radius of Earth's orbit is one astronomical unit, by definition, we take this orbital radius also in astronomical units. So, orbital radius of the planet upon orbital radius of Earth is going to give you sine theta. So, sine inverse. Suppose for Mercury, you take approximately the astronomical uh, orbital radius is 0.39 AU. You put that, you get 23 degrees. For Venus, it is about 0.72 AU. You get about 46 degrees. Here we are assuming all orbits are in the same plane and all orbits are circular. This is approximation. Actually, actually it will be if you divide 2 degrees, I think for Mercury it is about 28 degrees maximum resolution. And for Venus, it is about 49 degrees maximum elongation. But this already gives you a first order uh, calculation. Uh, use this to uh, estimate for how long the inner planet will be in the sky after sunset, sunset or before the sunset. You know that the sky goes around roughly 24 hours. Uh, in 24 hours, it goes around once. So, about the sky will rotate by about 3 degrees. In one hour. So, if your maximum elongation is about 46 degrees, then your the Venus can be at max 46 degrees away from Sun, and that means about in about three hours after sunset, the Venus has to spread, or three hours before sunrise, Venus will spread maximum. That means Venus will never see at midnight on in Indian latitudes. If you are in very high latitudes like Europe, you where sunset can also happen at 10 30 in the night, maybe you will be able to see Venus at midnight. But otherwise, on Indian latitudes, you will not see Venus. We have some more interesting phenomena 